Some supporters passed the time by strolling along the Rochdale Canal in the hours before the game. It is a walk through Manchester's history from the Castlefield Basin in the city's centre out through revitalised neighbourhoods like Ancoats and New Islington, past the red brick mills, warehouses, and factory chimneys that once made the city the epicenter of the Industrial Revolution and a new world. The Etihad Stadium, which is located a bit to the east of the canal, hosted a revolution for a new era on Wednesday night. This revolution placed Manchester back in the spotlight of the football world and was sponsored by Abu Dhabi, upending the pre-existing order. Manchester City, the team that for so long lived in Manchester United's shadow, is gradually overthrowing the European football aristocracy and building a new order. It was Bayern Munich who was defeated in the quarterfinals. Real Madrid, the 14-time champion of this contest, were destroyed on Wednesday. In the second leg of their semi-final on Wednesday night, City accomplished more than simply defeat the Champions League champions. They outnumbered them. They excelled over them. They were outraced. They beat them to it. They were outthought by them. They gave them the appearance of bitter kids who were tired of losing. They were flawless as they romped to a 4-0 victory on the night and a 5-1 victory overall to advance them to the final against Inter Milan in Istanbul on June 2010. The only team left standing between Pep Guardiola's team and the one championship they haven't won in their second incarnation since being acquired by Abu Dhabi 15 years ago is Inter, who have won the competition three times. City is attacking the game's leading ladies one by one. They must be ready now. They will undoubtedly win the greatest club trophy in the game this year for the first time. Guardiola, who twice won the competition with Barcelona but hasn't with City in 12 years, will undoubtedly win this year with City and solidify his status as the best coach of all time. Without a doubt, this is the year that City finally lives up to the hype that they are the finest club team in the world. Guardiola doesn't overthink things this year. The grandeur of this City team is finally being rewarded on the greatest platform this year. It might also be the year that the Premier League's won 15 allegations against City for violating the financial fair play rules are resolved. That is a reckoning that has the potential to alter a lot, but it is one for another day. The toughest challenge for City in their brisk pursuit of the treble, though, was getting past Carlo Ancelotti's Madrid, the reigning champions. They may yet lose to in turn the championship game or to Manchester United in the Fock Up final on June 3, but they have made significant strides in the direction of greatness. If either City defeats Chelsea on Sunday or Arsenal loses to Nottingham Forest on Saturday, the Premier League will be the first prize to fall to them. The squad that drew at the Bernabeu last Tuesday was retained by Guardiola. There was just one difference in the Madrid team, but it was unexpected. Eder Milito was substituted in place of Antonio Rediger, who had served his suspension and had been much praised for his performance in Spain when he had kept Holland out of the game. City had a good start. Madrid gave them the ball, which City utilized more and more skillfully. Holland was slipped in behind the defense by Kevin Bryne, but the ball went too wide for him to shoot even after he got around the Beaucourt walk. When he drew it back, it was free. Rodri danced into the area a minute later and pulled a shot wide. City consistently recovered the ball. Before Jack Grealish pivoted and tormented Danny Carvajal on the City left side in the 12th minute, he had hardly touched it before he floated in a gorgeous cross to the back post. There was Holland waiting. When the ball evaded Militao's frantic lunge, it appeared like Holland would score, but from close range, he headed straight at Courtois. Courtois kept the header out even as he tumbled backward into the goal. Guardiola sat on the sidelines with his head in his hands. Holland should have scored, but Courtois denied him again midway through the half despite his best efforts. Holland soared over Eduardo Camaving it to steer his header into the corner of the net after Manuel Akanji headed a pass back across goal. Courtois managed to get his hands on it and spread it out. For Madrid, it was only a little reprieve. The city advanced ruthlessly. Brian and John Stones created a lovely pattern on the right before Brian slipped the game's MVP Bernardo Silva a beautiful ball. When Courtois was caught off guard, Bernardo pivoted, 
moved closer to goal, and smashed his shot past him. Madrid had hardly managed a pass that was on aim, let alone a shot that was on target. Overwhelm was happening to them. Even when they finally detected an opportunity after 30 minutes, Kyle Walker easily outran Vinicius Jr. as he raced on to a through passive. One of the loudest applause of the evening was in response to that display of speed. Madrid at last started to come to life. Tony Cruz blasted a thunderbolt-like strike from 25 yards out 10 minutes before the half that beat Ederson but ricocheted against the crossbar, spiraled into the air, and bounced to safety. City immediately retaliated. Ilkay Gundogan stormed into the box after being supplied by Grealish, who was tormenting Madrid once more. Although his effort was stopped, it dropped to Bernardo, who used a deft looping header to get the ball past David Alaba and into the goal. It erupted in the stadium. The goal was within reach. Following the interval, City's performance became more tense. After a furious argument between Guardiola and Brian, Alaba took a free kick from 25 yards out that was dropping under the crossbar when Ederson pushed it over. Without a doubt, Guardiola was still thinking about how Madrid had defeated City in the semi-finals of the previous season with an incredible comeback. This Madrid team never surrenders. It never loses hope that it will triumph. City began to appear worn out. It seemed like City needed a boost of new energy after 70 minutes had passed and Guardiola had still not made a move. Brian in particular appeared worn out. With 15 minutes left, City almost made the game impossible to win. Holland handled a wonderful back heel from Gundogan and pushed a right foot shot toward the goal. It rose off of court while leg and kissed the top of the bar. Holland had the look of a striker with 52 goals who was conscious of his lack of success for the evening. It wasn't important. Brian curled in a free kick from the left a minute later, Akanji flicked it on, and it cannoned off Milito and found its way into the goal. In the extra period, Julian Alvarez, a fellow replacement, was assisted by Phil Foden, who made a deft ball through to him. City had ended. The Poznan was done by the entire stadium. City would undertake the final act of their revolution in Istanbul the following month. And television will broadcast it.